What's up guys, in this video we're going to be going over a plugin called Colorizer. So if you don't know, Colorizer is a way to see colors change in real time as you're typing them out in NeoVim or Vim, right? So, as always you can head over to my blog for um, all of the commands we're going to run in this video. Uh, you'll notice that this plugin in particular is a little bit different than the other plugins that we've installed. This one is written in Lua, hence the .lua extension here. So. Your configuration is going to be a little bit different and changing some of the config about it is going to be different because we're going to have to do it in Lua. So plug this in using your favorite plugin manager and we're going to create a directory called Lua inside of our nvim uh, directory here. And then we're going to touch a file called plugcolorizer.lua in there and it's a .lua so all of the configurations that we make are going to have to be in Lua. So let's open that up. All right, and so this is Lua here, and we're just passing all the different configuration options to the plugin uh, that it accepts. So I think it accepts a few more, but these are what I think are the important ones. These are the different ways that you can color things. Um, if you notice, we can already see, okay, we have blue being lit up over there, and we'll show you that this works in different formats as well, just not typing out the word blue or red or so on and so forth. Uh, this is also a Lua file, so if you want to be able to lint a Lua file, um, what I recommend doing is checking out my video on IntelliSense, so we can do COC install, COC uh, Lua, and if you're going to do this, then make sure that you also have Lua rocks installed. If you don't have Lua rocks installed, that'll, that'll fail. So now if we add some nonsense here, it'll pick it up as nonsense, which is nice. All right, so now that's our configuration. Now let's open up init.vim. So init.vim is typically where we just source all of our other files. Um, let's take a look at this Lua file compared to uh, one of our normal source files. So basically, it's not too different except for uh, instead of typing source, you'll put Lua file in front of it. And then just the extension all the way to dot vim for this one and all the way to dot lua for this one. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way and I gave another option for another way to do it on my blog is this way you'll do lua require plugin or plug colorizer right and you won't have to put the dot lua and it's kind of a cool way to do it but I like to do it this way because if I'm over top of it I can treat it like all of my other um, extensions and type GF on top of it and hop over to the configuration if I want to take a look at it. So that's why I make it look like these ones. So these are two valid ways to source a Lua file. So you can do it through a Lua file like this in a very similar way to how I'm sourcing everything else or you can do Lua require and then just the name of it not the extension. Alright so that's sourcing it and now that we have it sourced and configured we can take a look at some of the stuff that it can do. So if you didn't know, um, and this is it working right now, if you didn't know, you can increment numbers uh, with control A and decrement numbers with control X in Vim and NeoVim. So we'll start pressing control A on this. And also what you'll notice is it won't pick up that it's hex uh, for when it has a hashtag in front of it. So that kind of, you know, isn't great, but I think there's a way to get around it. I know that if you put 0x and then like this, um, and then we'll add like, I don't know, a couple more numbers, then what you can do is you can start doing control A, and it'll start, you see how I go from A, B, C, D, E, F, and then it'll, okay, and start to increment the next one. So that's, that's hex, right? So for some reason it won't work with just the hashtag in front of it. So I tried to increment that A and it didn't work. Um, if you figure that out, someone let me know. <laughs> also, it doesn't color this one, so yeah. Now, another thing you can do, and it works a little bit better with these RGB formats, is we can go do something like this and hold Control A and we'll start incrementing the color and watch it change. So if you want to get something specific, you can kind of just watch it change. Now we can jump past what's valid, so we'll have to jump back, but yeah, so we can change colors just like that. And here we can do a very similar thing. We can start to change the colors. Uh, whoa, that's interesting. 
So the next thing we'll do is we'll start to type out color names like this, and you saw that earlier. Uh, this works. And uh, this is my blog, by the way. So this is like the markdown file that I used to write my blog. So this is like, these are the numbers that I'm working with. Um, it works with other formats too, but I figured I would just show you these because I think they're pretty common. Uh, all right, so that's basically the colorizer plugin. I think it's pretty cool. The last thing I wanted to go over is renaming uh, things like to make this easier. So you notice that we couldn't hold control A over top of one of the Fs. So what you can do is just press R on top of it and then put something like eight here or then we'll do R here and then put something like six, I don't know. So R is a good way to uh, change these numbers too and watch them happen in real time. All right. So, uh, the other plugin that I wanted to go over in this video was Rainbow Parentheses. And we're going to be looking at a fork by June Gun. June Gun is the guy who did FZF. Um, that was in my last video. So, you know, I'm a big fan of June Gun stuff. Uh, so, plug it in just like normal, like how we would plug anything else in. This is a typical Vim, uh, Vim script, so nothing too special. Uh, the next thing we'll do is add a configuration file, and I've already added the configuration file in plug config rainbow.vim. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that these are all of the different pairs that we're going to be um, setting the rainbow parentheses on, right? So this is just a normal set of parentheses, uh, brackets, and curly braces. And then it's all, you know, put inside of brackets, which makes it kind of confusing to look at, but it's not that hard to figure out. And plus, these are probably the only three pairs you'd really want to colorize. Maybe you'd want to colorize another, and you could add them here if you wanted to. Uh, it'll only go 16 levels deep for colorization, so I'll show you that in a second. And then for different file types, instead of putting a star here, you can start to type out, like, you know, JavaScript or um, Python or whatever and then it'll only look at those ones. All right, so we'll put that star back. I just leave it on for all of um, all the different file types. So we'll take a look at this. All right, and you'll notice that it stopped after 16 levels deep, but it colored all of them, so that's pretty cool. Um, very similar for, um, whoops, very similar for this guy, and same thing for this guy. All right, so those were a couple colorful um, plugins that I wanted to look at in this video. Uh, this one is especially cool, the colorizer. It's definitely a novelty because it's written in Lua, and I definitely want to um, check out more plugins that are going to be written in Lua just because I think they're pretty cool, and I want to spend some time getting into the Lua language. So make sure to um, you know leave a like and subscribe. Uh, you can check out the development for this config over on my GitHub. Make sure to leave a star or fork it. Um, you can check out the colorizer uh, repo. I left a link in the blog. Uh, you could probably go over more configuration and all the other kinds of stuff you can do with this. But that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.